Module 2 Staining and Microscopy How to Smear, Heat Fix and Simple Stain How to Gram Stain A smear is a technique which is used to inoculate a microscope slide with a monolayer of cells from your specimen. We start with clean labelled slides. Apply a small drop of distilled water to the centre of each slide. It is usual to make multiple smears from the same specimen at the same time. This is the most efficient way as moving downstream, you will want to stain multiple slides at once. Sterilize your loop. Cells will be removed from the plate and resuspended in each drop of water. Pick an isolated colony to ensure purity. The loop may be touched to a sterile region of the plate to ensure that it has cooled. Pick a single colony. Remember, this contains millions of cells and is more than adequate to produce a smear. Watch how the loop is moved in circular motion to resuspend the cells in each drop of water. There is no need to re-sterilize the loop between each slide of the same specimen. When all of the drops have been inoculated, it is time to do the smear. The loop is moved in a controlled way back and forth, smearing the cells across the entire viewing area of the slide. You may turn the loop onto its side and circular motions are often helpful when spreading and smearing the cells over the whole area. Once you have smeared the cells, push the slide into the area of the vaccinator so that it will stay warm and it will air dry as quickly as possible. However, it can still take 10 or more minutes for the air to dry the slide completely. You cannot move forward onto the heat fixation step until all the water has evaporated from the slide. If you were to heat fix too quickly, you may crack your slide or distort the cell structure. Now that you've finished those slides, you must sterilize your loop. Move on to the next specimen. This plate is not a streak plate. There are no isolated colonies. So it will be important to just touch the loop gently and remove a small amount of growth. The slides here will show you what happens when there is at the top too small a drop. In the middle, too large a drop, and at the bottom slide, just right. Remove a small amount of culture. Resuspend with circular motion. Repeat the process for the next slide. This drop was too large. As we try to resuspend the cells, the water is moving across the slide. The last one is just right. It resuspends easily with no risk of splashing onto the bench. Because this top drop was too small, it has already dried. It's too difficult to spread it across the whole surface. The cells clump and will not produce a monolayer. This one, although it will smear easily, 
The liquid is too high a volume. It will take far too long to air dry. The bottom one is just right. It smears easily and will dry relatively quickly. Move them into the heat zone and sterilize your loop. Before staining a smear, you must heat fix the cells so that they remain on the slide. Holding the slide in a peg with the specimen facing away from the vaccinerator, apply heat at the mouth of the vaccinerator for up to 10 seconds. During this time, the heat will cause the proteins in the cell walls to stick to the glass slide. Allow the slides to cool. A heat fixed smear can be stored for weeks before staining. To perform a simple stain, tidy your bench and place your staining rack in the centre. You do not need to work in the aseptic zone because heat fixation has now killed all of the cells on your slide. Crystal violet is a basic stain. Perform the simple stain by flooding the specimen with the dye. Stain for one minute. During this time, the basic dye will cross the cell wall, staining the peptidoglycan layer purple. It will enter the cell cytoplasm and also stain it purple. This is a simple stain that provides contrast. After the minute of staining, wash all excess stain from the front and back of the slide. Shake off the water and blot excess water using bibulous paper. The technique for bibulous paper is to place the specimen face down in the book and apply gentle pressure. Do not scrub the surface of the slide. Although excess water has been removed, the slide is not yet dry and must continue to air dry. You cannot place a wet slide on a microscope for observation. It will cause fogging and you will not be able to resolve your image. The gram stain is a differential staining technique which categorizes organisms on the basis of their cell wall structure. To perform a gram stain, you will need heat fixed smears of your specimens. Place them on a staining rack if you do not have a staining sink. Make sure all of your reagents are accessible once you start staining, you will continue through each step. Your reagents include crystal violet basic stain, iodine, the mordant, alcohol, the decolorizer, and saffronin, the counter stain. Start by opening all of your stain bottles. First step, flood the specimens with crystal violet. Flooding means covering the entire specimen with the stain, but holding the stain above the slide by surface tension. Wait for one minute for the staining to be complete. During this time, crystal violet will pass into the cell wall and through into the cytoplasm, staining all cells purple.
after one minute, use the peg to hold the slide carefully over the staining rack. Water, deionized or distilled, is used to gently wash the crystal violet from the cells. All excess stain will be removed from the specimens at this time. Remember to wash the back of each slide so that you will have a clean slide for observation later. Repeat the process for each specimen that you're gram staining. Remember to angle the slides so that they wash efficiently. Place the slides carefully back on the staining rack and move to the next step. Flood with iodine. Make sure that the entire specimen is always covered. Wait for a minute to stain. During this time, the iodine is also entering the cell wall and binding with the crystal violet, making the first basic crystal violet stain less soluble. Again, carefully lift the slides, angle them for washing. Always use a gentle flow of water. After the iodine step comes one of the most critical parts of the staining procedure, the decolorization step. You will perform this on each slide individually, then wash immediately. Take the alcohol decolorizer. Hold the slide in the peg and this time angle instead of flooding. You will wash the alcohol over the surface of the cells for 10 to 15 seconds. This is the decolorization step. Immediately, you will wash any remaining alcohol away from the specimen. During this time, the alcohol will penetrate the cell membrane of the gram negative and the cell wall of both gram negative and gram positive, destabilizing the cell wall and making it more porous. As the cell wall becomes porous, then crystal violet stain can be released from all of the cells. The differential portion of the staining procedure is because that the gram positive cell wall is much thicker than the gram negative. And therefore, in this short time of decolorizing, only partial decolorization of crystal violet occurs with gram positives. Lastly, you come in and flood with saffronin. This is a counter stain. All this does is enter both cell types across the cell wall into the cytoplasm. It will stain them all pink. However, only the gram negatives became completely decolorized during the alcohol step and therefore they will appear pink. The gram positives retained some crystal violet due to the thickness of their cell wall and they will still look purple. This is the differential nature of the gram stain.